Hello everyone, welcome to Fahad's tutorial and this is Fahad Hussain. And this class is all about the classifications and the system of binomial nomenclature. So in your biology book, the first chapter, there are some parts which is deals about the classification. So if the question is what is classifications? So the answer would be, this is an internationally accepted system of naming of any organisms. Like in in this planet, we have number of millions of species around us and each and every single species has their own identified unified coding name. And that is established since like, we need to know this name which is Carolus Linnaeus and his books, The Species Platinum which was published in 1753. So he's the pioneer of the classifications and we know all about this taxa with the system and the groups which is chronology uh, which is known as our classifications so understanding the classifications there are some steps and there are some rules to divide each and every single organisms and each and every single living kingdoms in a specified and unified way like here the largest steps of classification is kingdom so from kingdom we see there are some chronology and there are some style of reading because it should be an oblique way to write it down and the second unified code is phylum or division so following these rules this is very important to maintain the order of sequences in classifications because we cannot shuffle it or we cannot exchange the space of the texa or the rank because this is very dignified and this is specific so in kingdom this is the largest rank or largest texa and the species is the smallest rank so if you divide we see that kingdom phylum or division class order family genus and species so these are the dignified process of classifications but in modern classification we have more divisions and subdivisions inside this so we have sub kingdom subdivisions even subclass suborder so there are some other groups and takes that so understanding this classification we need to know that each and every single steps is called taxa and that's why in biology which branch of biology deals about the classifications it's called taxonomy and the father of taxonomy is known as Carolus Linnaeus because his books in Spacious Plantarum it was published in 1753 where it's the the process has been identified that how the classification will be so as we know that this is an internationally accepted system so there must be some rules for maintaining the unambiguousness of their system because the word unambiguous means that it should be specified so this should be very very unique it should be very very unique and the naming of any species is not aligned with other species names so there must be some differences so in case of understanding the classification we need to know two more words which is actually the internationally uh, certified for botany and zoology naming process because where we know about this word binomial nomenclature it means the naming of any living body in two different two words number one the first part of the naming will express as the genus and the last part will express the species so the icbn means the international code of botanical nomenclature and icz means the international code of zoological nomenclature so when naming of any botany and zoological part like in plants and animals icbn will define in case of plants and icz will define in case of animal so when the naming is done there are some process and rules of naming these things so if on your question paper there are some questions like um, what are the principles of binomial nomenclature so i will explain 
throughout the book because there were some distinguishing lines that will explain how we will maintain the process and the principles of binomial nomenclature. Number one, the language of scientific naming of an organism would be Latin. So suppose if we say the binomial nomenclature of humans, so if humans that would be homo sapiens so here I wrote homo sapiens this is the scientific name of humans so in this case we saw that there are two different part the first part is all about genus and the second part is about species and this word are actually Latin word it will say that in case of uh, mango so in case of mango it would be like mangifera indica indica so here are also two parts and as the, this sort of ruling system so naming there are two parts that's why it's called binomial by two nomial nomenclature so homo sapiens and mangifera indica all are Latin word. So the principle of classification would be number one. The language of scientific naming of an organism would be Latin. Number two, every scientific name should have two parts, as I said earlier, and the genus name always comes first, followed by the spacious name. So as this is the genus part will come first, and this is the spacious part will be followed. Number three. The scientific name of an organism should have to be unique because a single legitimate names cannot be used for naming two distinct organisms. That means it should be unique. This Homo sapiens, Mangifera indica, even in case of honeybee, it would be like Apis indica. In case of uh, tiger, it would be Panthera tigris. In case of potato, it would be Solanum tuberosum. So this name should be unique and a definitely what I say distinct in case of different different organism so this is the number three principle number four the first alphabet of the first name would be a capital letter with the remaining alphabet is small letter and the second part of the name is totally in small letter like I wrote here homo sapiens so I cannot write the S or any other alphabet in capital letter so when I start, when I will write a scientific name, the first alphabet of the genus would be in capital letter, but the rest of the things would be the small letter. So this is the number four condition and the four principle. Number five, at the time of printing of a scientific name, it should be done with italic type. I mean, in case of printing, it would be italic. I mean, you know. Uh, some oblique type of so in case of like catala fish we can say like catala catala so i cannot write actually but i'm just uh, showing you it would be like uh, oblique so in case of printing of any scientific name it should be done with italic word number six when a scientific name would be written in hand that i'm writing right now with my own hands so in hand two pairs of it should be separately underlined that is very very important because i wrote here homo sapiens it's two different groups of the scientific name of humans so it would be like underlined in separate way so there should not be a single line there should be a difference there should be a distinct from two different lines so here is written that when a scientific name would be written in hand, two pairs of it should be separately underlined. Like in case of petty, we say like Oriza sadiva. So when I say that in case of rice, so it will be like Oriza sativa. So there are two different parts. So this is genus and this is species of rice. So we need to underline separately under these two separate words. Number seven, if the scientific name of an organism is named by some scientist, the earliest legitimate name given by the first scientist 
will be accepted in accordance with the rules of priority. Like we saw like in case of Homo sapiens, they are written like L1750H. So it means that Homo sapiens is the name created by the scientist Linnaeus in 1758. So the word of the naming of a scientist would be written just after the binomial nomenclature. So that's why it's said like that the, the scientist who gave any scientific name, the eighth uh, principle I'm, I'm reading, the scientist who would give any scientific name of an organism, his name can be cited and abbreviated from at the end of the binomial name with mentioning of the year of the naming like that. So the principle of binomial naming are at these what I wrote just from books so first of all this is a Latin word second of all most importantly there are two distinguished part of a naming like the number one the first part is genus and the second part is species when we wrote that the separate underlined must be under these two different words or even if the scientist who invented the name should be mentioned after the binomial nomenclature with the year of invention so uh, this is actually the very short discussions and explanations about the binomial nomenclature and there are loads of uh, explanations are there but I just only um, explaining from the the level of SSC English version books so those students you are studying right now I hope that you understand things very clearly and of course uh, I know that those are studying in English versions uh, from Bangla medium or even other sites the uh, memorizing the scientific news getting much uh, tough primarily but after when you do more practice you know better like in your book there were some uh, scientific name has been written like in case of rice it would be oriza sativa in case of jute it would be like corpus uh, corporas capsularis in case of mango i wrote it mangifera indica jackfruit artocarpus heterophyllus even water lily nymphaea nochali in case of java it is i mean hibiscus rosa sinensis so this word actually latin word so somehow uh, it has some different uh, taste of uh, in case of sounding and spelling so i hope you uh, will memorize things better because practice makes everybody perfect so here a very short descriptions you should remember icbn in case of isis 18 and of course the name of carolus linius and the name of books uh, with the year so of course this is very important because the principles of uh, binomial nomenclature is very common uh, so i hope you will learn well and do let me know what you need see you on the next class stay well bye